it's Angela with Polymer Clay Peeps and today I'd like to share with you a tutorial on how I make a mechanical garden. I'm going to show you how to make a compact but you could easily adapt this to make a packed in, a brooch or any other type of item you'd like. Clay amounts we're going to need today a two and a half inch square piece of black, a little ball of black, and then smaller amounts of the metallic colors. The first thing that we'll do is prepare the background for the piece. So take your two and a half inch squared black clay and smooth it down with a piece of paper or Kleenex or even a cloth. We're just wanting to get rid of the shine and give it a matte finish. To select your background piece, you'll want a stamp that has a lot of height as well as a good amount of negative space. I'm using fast drying pigment ink for this stage, but you could use any kind of acrylic paint. You could also silk screen an item on with acrylic paint, micas, or pan pastels. If you do use mica or pan pastel, make sure that you burnish it very well after you apply it. That way you don't get any distortion in the background as you continue to work the piece. Next, we're going to make a organic style cane. Um, this is a technique that I learned from Christy Friesen. I'm just going to randomly rip all these clay colors up and stack them in no particular order. I just want um, a lot of colors touching each other. That way there's a lot of variety when we slice into the cane. So I'm going to rip them up. I'm going to put it into a sheet and run it through the pasta machine. I'm running it through on a setting number three, so it's a medium setting on my machine. So just tear your clay randomly and you just want to make a stack that has all the different little colors mixed throughout it. Run it through your machine once, then you're going to rip it apart again, restack it and run it back through the machine a second time. That will be your final time through the pasta machine. Um, if you're using some very small amounts, you might find that once is enough and um, twice might start a distortion instead of a nice clean layer. So if you're using smaller quantities, just run it through the machine once and then proceed with the cutting and stacking like I'm going to show you. Now I'm going to fold it in half, pressing all the air out, and then I'm going to cut it in half again. And then I'm going to stack those two colors on top or two layers on top of each other. And then I'm going to cut it in half again. Now when I cut it in half again, I'm going to match the sides like I would if I were doing a Natasha bead. So you want the two halves to come back together in the center, making a mirror image of each other. And then from this point, I'm going to um, reduce it just a little bit just to start forming a leaf shape. I'm really going to just shape it kind of into an oval at this point. And then I'm going to um, cut off the end that 
um, distorts. Here's a close-up of the um, cane at this point. You can see that the um, there's a lot of different colors and a lot of lines, and it has a very organic, natural look to it. Um, just going to shape it, continue shaping it and compressing it, making sure that I'm working out all of the air that I can feel. And then I'm going to wrap this cane. But first, I'm going to snip off these uneven edges and the ends that are distorting a little bit. And with that scrap, I'm going to run it through the pasta machine a couple of times until it starts forming stripes. And once I start seeing a stripey look to it, um, then I'm going to stop blending it. And I'll use that as one of the layers that I'm going to wrap this cane with. In addition to that scrap blend, I'm going to use a sheet of gold and a sheet of 18 karat gold, uh, both sheeted out on a medium thin setting. I'm using a number four on my pasta machine, which is an atlas. Now I'm going to take the striped sheet that we just made and I'm gonna put it between the gold and the 18 karat gold and then wrap and reduce the cane. Reduce the cane to an appropriate size and slice off several leaves. Now I'm going to use um, a small ball of the scrap clay and my swirls and snakes tool and I'm going to reduce um, this ball of clay into a thin snake and then I'm going to cut that in half and reduce it a little bit more. These two varieties and diameters of snake will form the stems of the flowers in the mechanical garden. This is a pretty small project. You don't need a lot of any of the elements at all. Um, so I'm just going to make my two snakes and then I'm going to set them aside. Now take your two inch cutter and decide where in your two and a half inch square you want to cut out. Once that's optimized, go ahead and cut out your circle and remove the excess clay. Now we'll take a look at the other items that I'm going to have here and be working with. Bacon bond. Metallic colored mica powder. The leaves and stems we made texture stamps, a small ball of black clay, the prepared background piece, hot fix crystals, nail art butterflies, and findings and bead caps ranging from six millimeter to 20 millimeter. I'll use bead caps a bit differently today. Um, they're going to be a primary component of the flowers. Some of them are very, very thin and you can easily squish them to reshape it. Um, once flattened, you'll see that a lot of different designs could easily be seen as flowers with a little imagination. So I'm gonna decide where I want to set the biggest finding that I'm gonna to use today and that's gonna to be um, 
this one, which is 16 millimeters wide. I'm going to use that as a center point. So I'm going to put a little bit of polymer clay on the back side of it, and I'm going to push that through the hole so I have connection of clay on both sides. And once I have that filled, I'm going to attach it where I'm going to start my design. And I'm just going to work organically and just build it however feels natural. I'm always going to put um, clay on the back of the finding as well as sometimes on top of it if I'm adding another layer. Um, the background is still raw clay that has not been cured yet. So I'm just using the clay to make sure that I have connections so the metal is secured to the clay and won't pop off of it once it's cured. If I ever get to the point where I don't have um, clay touching uh, raw uncured clay, then I'll add a drop of the bacon bond just to help reinforce it. So now I'll just start adding other elements of interest and I'll add the stems and the leaves and fill out the design. I'm going to start applying the stems, putting a little curvature in them and aligning the angle on the bottom of the stem with the curvature of the circle. Next, I'm going to add the stems and the leaves and then the bases of the rest of the flowers and then start building the layers. If you end up not liking an element or the placement is wrong, don't hesitate to pick something back up. Just smooth the surface back with your piece of paper by burnishing it again before you move on and bake it. I need to reduce the leaves a little bit just to make them fit better for the secondary stems. Now that I have the basic layout, I'm going to go ahead and start building up the flowers. Each flower will have a base um, finding or bead cap, and then one more on top of that. And then I like to finish with a crystal.
If I move an item or nick it with a fingernail, I'll just take my piece of paper and reburnish just to cure that bump or whatever is marring the surface. This stem is going to be a little long to put another little flower in there, and I do want to put another one in there, so I'm going to trim it carefully so I don't mar the background. I am putting a small ball of clay behind the finding to have that clay on clay connection. The smaller bead caps can be a little bit fiddly, but I am also putting black polymer clay behind them just to ensure I've got clay on clay contact throughout the flower. Now I'm going to use a little dot of black polymer clay on the top of the finding as a base for the crystal. I am going to slightly texture it and apply the tiniest little bit of mica powder to it.
I'll put little dots in the rest of the flower centers and then I'll apply the hot fix crystal to each center but I am going to press it deeply into the clay. That will give the clay between each of the bead caps a chance to connect through the hole in the center and bond. Ensure all your connections are secure. And now I'm going to add a couple of little butterflies to give it that finishing little flower feel. Going to make sure that my connections are secure and fix any additional blemishes that I might have nicked it. Then I'm going to bake it for one hour. After it's cooled, I'm going to apply deep shine to the stems and to the leaves just for a little pop. Then I'll glue it to my compact with liquid fusion glue. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and I'm looking forward to seeing your version. Bye for now. Thank you.